everybody. Uh, got a new mower. Uh, this is the um, Xmark Turf Tracer. That's the that's the you got Turf Tracer, which has the floating deck, and then you have the uh, it's like Viking or something like that. That's the non-floating deck. This is the floating deck. This is the higher model. Um, it's the hydro, not belt driven, so it's pure hydro, 36 inch. It's got the Kawasaki FS. 481 V uh, motor V twin and um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and back this off the trailer and go over it real quick and uh, talk about it and go do a little bit of demo with it uh, this has been a dream mower of mine for many years I've never had a walk behind hydro um, like this I had the 52 inch John Deere for a little while but that was, that's not practical for my purposes um, I've always wanted a 36 inch hydro walk behind, not belt driven, but a hydro. And um, at $7,000 out the door, <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a Cadillac of lawnmowers right here. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing off. All right, a real cool thing about hydro walk behind mowers is you don't have the belts to have to deal with. You don't have a transmission that you gotta go from neutral into reverse. Um, and when you back this off, you don't you don't squeeze the levers to get tension off the belt while leaving it in gear. So if it starts to get away from you going down the trailer, you let go of the, the, the handles and that would lock the transmission and stop it. You don't have to do any of that. Fire it up and back it right off. off the trailer you saw how easy that was just fire it up and back it right off all you got to do is release the parking brake and squeeze the handles you don't you don't have to do anything other than just release the parking brake and squeeze the handles even in the handles neutral position just squeeze the handles and it walked right off I'll show you all that later uh, but for right now let's talk about the the mower itself real quick it's a 36 inch deck twin blade um, it's a floating deck so you see you got your, you can, the deck will go up and down right here. And so, you know, for scalping and stuff like that, um, you got your adjusters right here. They're in half inch increments and you can also buy spacers that if, let's just say you're cutting right now at three, I got it set up at three. Well, let's just say a customer says, can you go a little bit higher? And I go one more hole and that's three and a half. So, oh, that's too high. Uh, but three is too low. They make a little spacer that you can just add underneath this cotter pin. Like this is this, this right here, you could put a little washer right here that's gonna raise the deck up, the width of the washer. Maybe half the distance to the hole for the next adjustment. And you can also do that the other way. So if three is too high, two and a half too low, then you can come back, put it in the two and a half, put the washer, and you'd be cutting at two and three quarter. So you could do that too, so that's really cool. Um, you can access your belts right here, which is really neat how this is set up. It's got an electric clutch, you know, the PTO, so you don't have a lever that you have to adjust. You don't have a, a tension pulley that is gonna be on a lever that tightens your belt. The belt's always tight on an idle pulley right here, and this is your adjuster pulley right here that's spring-loaded automatically you don't touch it. It's always got tension and you just tighten it. You, you engage the blades by hitting the switch and it fires the clutch up. Um, you know, energizes the clutch, locks it, and there you go. So you got your blade belt bolts right here, one and two, for your or blade uh, bolts right there, I mean. Right there is your um, blade bolts and nut. So you just Go, go off your ramp or just jack up the front end and, and you can access it that way. Um, that's the, the spring I was telling you guys about right there. Comes with the side chute. So you can use the side chute or, uh oh, I got company. My neighbor, hold on. 
Sorry about that, that was my neighbor. Uh, see the hydros right here. Uh, you got your hoses, works off independent pumps. You got your fluid fill right there. And underneath you have a, a oil filter for your hydros that you change out. It's got like a five gallon fuel tank up here, uh, really big. 1.6 quarts of oil go in there, 10W40 for this area. The front tires are semi-pneumatic. They do not take air, uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, your tires, these little front tires going flat, which they always do, and that sucks. These are hard tires, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Here's your torque specs for your blade. Uh, 50 to 55 foot-pounds when you tighten your blade. Even tells you a 3 8 by 16 thread by three and three quarter inch long grade eight bolt should you need to replace it. Anti-scout wheel for like I said, the floating deck. Big tires. This is something that is really super important when it comes to wide area mowing and we'll talk about that in a minute when I get this back onto the tripod. Back here you got a few grease fittings to worry about. This is your parking brake right here. So you see it just See how it's free and you lift this up and it goes on to the tires, both tires. All right, there you go. That's where you fuel it up, of course, right there. The starter coil uh, pull cord was actually on this side and I took it off and moved it to that side because I'm righty. Uh, so when I stand in the trailer, I will pull it with my right hand. So I changed that yesterday. What a pretty machine. It's the S series. I asked him, is the S series the top of the line series in this? He said, yes, in this model, the S series for 36 and 48 inch is the top of the line. When you get into your 52 and your 60 inch walk behinds, then they have the X series, which um, has slightly different uh, features on it. Uh, for example, it comes with a Kohler engine the X series comes with a Kohler engine and some other few other things um, but this turf tracer S series hydro 36 inch walk behind this is the top of the line X mark 36 inch walk behind right here is your adjustment so if you let go of both handles and it starts to kind of go to the left and you got to keep putting a little bit of right handle in it um, or it starts to go to the right you got to keep squeezing a little left handle in it or whatever to straighten it out you adjust that so you turn it to the direction that you need the mower to go to straighten out so you can let go and it'll just keep running um, another mod that I did the hand the pull cord handle I swapped that to this side but I also took off the stupid operator presence levers which are right here and they squeeze down and it's a metal bar that squeeze down onto the foam and then your hand grips this right here and I'll show you all this later I took that off and I connected the wire solid so the machine always thinks I'm standing behind here holding it so I can fire the machine up, turn the blades on, take the parking brake off and I don't have to have my hand squeezing that metal bar down. I can't stand that. I don't like it. Um, I don't recommend you do it because it's a YouTube channel and so I don't want to be sued. <laughs> but um, you know, when you get your big boy pants on and you've been around machines for a while, those operator presence levels Le levers just become a pain in the butt um, most people just disconnect them uh, but you know you do what you're comfortable with doing okay so here's the machine here's the machine looking kind of nice I'll put the cover back on and if you look through that black cylinder right there and that black cylinder right there those are your those are your hydro motors or your gearing or whatever you want to say you got the pumps the pumps are behind the engine you got individual pump one there and one on the other side and those pumps send the fluid down to the drive right there independent drive so like if you compare that to my gravely it wasn't set up like that the gravely is a hydraulic you know it, it was hydro of course and, and all zero turns are hydro, but you have different levels of hydro. And I, I never really understood all that. But let's just say, unless you start getting into top of the line stuff, you have like a, a non-serviceable 
cheaper hydro system than what you're seeing on this machine right here. And that's all stuff we'll go over in time. We'll talk about all that. I just want to introduce you to this and, and take you for a little demo. All right, so back here is your little cockpit area, right? So you got your, your blade PTO right here. That works off the electric clutch. Comes with the hour meter, of course. I got it at 0.5, it's got 1.1 now. Choke for cold start. That's your throttle for your engine. This is your speed control for your hydros. All right, you fire it up with the brake on, you leave it in neutral. If you need to go backwards, you don't have to do nothing. Just take the brake lever off. It's on, you pop the brake lever off and just squeeze these levers back that are locked in the neutral position right here. See, that's unlocked. That's the neutral position, that's your locked position. If you had the operator presence levers on, you'd have to have it in this position in order to walk away from the machine if the engine was spinning. Um, so with, with this like this, you fire it up, give it a little fuel, touch nothing, squeeze the levers and you can back it off your trailer, okay? Um, then when you're ready to go forward, you just, you can use your stomach actually and lean on this and this will push it up. There's no clicking, it just slides up, six being the fastest. And so what you're gonna see is if you watch these levers with the hydro, um, is as you move this up, it moves the levers. It's, it's expanding these levers out. The more the levers are moved out, the faster the fluid is being pumped through the gear motors down there where the wheels are and that drives it, all right? So if you're up here in, at three, there's your, there's your distance, okay? So you, you're mowing along, you just mow along and when you want, is this, is this working good? I hope it's working good. If you want um, to slow down, you'd squeeze it a little bit, just a little bit. You want to stop, you squeeze it to where you feel a thud. And if you want to go backwards, squeeze it a little more. Did you hear that? That's on the return spring. Squeeze it a little more and then it goes backwards. Let it go and it'll take off on you. You need to slow down, you slow it down right here. Set your speed to the speed that you want. If you need a temporary slowdown, you can just take a little off with your fingers. But if you're like, oh, I'm mowing too fast, or you're around delicate flowers or whatever, you can just slow your throttle down or your speed control right here and go. You don't even have to touch the machine at this point. You can just be walking along beside it with your hands behind your back if you're stupid, but you can. And because I took the operator presence levers off, it'll just mow. This thing will just mow. And when you're ready to turn, you squeeze the handle and you turn. The great thing about having a hydro is when you come up to something and you, you have to stop or you have to make a tight turn, and I'll demo that for you in a minute, um, you can go up to it, squeeze the handles back, come back, and then go around and do a three or a full point turn and swing around. Um, with a belt drive, it gets very tiresome going up, squeezing the levers, and then trying to pull it back. You're actually trying to pull the machine back in the grass, and that's not easy to do. So then you use your knee and you pop it in the reverse and you let go and the reverse on, on a belt drive mower really sucks. They don't work for it. It's just kind of reverse assist. And it starts to kind of come back a little bit as you pull. And then you gotta stop, put it back in gear, and then go. And then and you do that. With a hydro, you just go forward, back, forward, back, and then you can go around and you can go. Um, we'll demo that next door in her backyard. Okay, when it comes to tires, right, hydros usually come with a bigger tire than a belt drive. When you get a belt drive, you usually will have a, a, a smaller tire, not necessarily thinner. 36, 48 inch, they're all pretty much going to have the same size tire back here. Um, a 32 inch might have a little thinner tire because the deck is only to here. So what's the point in buying a small 32 inch to fit behind or fit through gates if the wheels aren't gonna fit. So they usually come with what I call pizza cutter tires. So when you get a 32, it's four inches smaller, you might lose an inch and a half on this wheel and an inch and a half on that wheel. It's something to consider because the weight of that large area mower on those smaller tires, and I call them pizza cutter tires, is gonna push these little pizza cutters into the dough or into the soil. And if there's any bit of moisture from rain in the past few days, all the way up to that day, and you're trying to cut, and you're trying to make a living, those pizza cutter tires will rut bad. Um, so 
you end up leaving the big machine on the trailer and you're push mowing because of that reason, because of those pizza cut of tires and it sucks. You got a machine that you can no longer use. Um, so if you, I mean, if you got fences and you have to use a 32, then that's something you need to be concerned with. A 36 inch will fit in just about every single fence. You can build an entire lawn service of over a hundred lawns and never, ever, ever need any other size mower than just this mower. It'll fit in 99% of your fences and you can tell a customer, sorry, my mower just won't fit. And there's plenty more work to go. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't have, but if, I mean, you got, I got a Honda, so I would do it, but I'm just saying you don't need to. If you start going into like zero turns and stuff like that, yep, they're about $3,000 cheaper to $2,000 cheaper, depending on what size you go with. You go with like a 42 inch zero turn, like I had the Gravely, that was 3,500. I think they even sell them now for like three grand out the door, well, plus tax and stuff, but like three grand. The problem with those Gravelys is the smallest deck you're gonna get is a 42 inch, right? And I'll tell you why. Um, the 42 inch is gonna have pretty nice sized tires back here. So you don't have pizza cutter tires but you have a 42 inch deck. So now it's not gonna fit behind probably 40 to 60% of your backyards. Now you need something on top of the 42 inch. Now you're carrying two machines. The 42 inch only saves you time and effort in the front yard. You still gotta push mow the backyard, unless you have a 36, you know, I mean, whatever. But I'm just saying, if, if you're just going out and buying, I'm just helping you with compare. It's just something to think about as you build your business. All right, know what your customers are going to have. Know the areas you're advertising in. Look at the fences, look at the gates, and realize, man, if I spend four grand or five grand on a really good zero turn, a 42 inch, I'm still not gonna be able to get into a lot of these fences. I might wanna consider something else. That's where you start considering walk-behinds. And I'll tell you why. Because if you try to get like one of those 34 inch Gravely uh, riders or Toro, or Husqvarna or a 30 inch or uh, a 38 inch or something like that and you think that, that that's going to be the ticket those mowers weigh a lot add your body weight to it and then consider the pizza cutter tires that those little mowers are going to come with now you'll see some really small skinny tires that's why you what a zero turn I would say you never want to go below a 42 inch never unless you're guaranteed to always be mowing in the drive 42 inch zero turn regardless of the brand will save you about three thousand dollars over this machine right here but this machine right here will never need another machine on the trailer that's the point of it where a 42 inch zero turn might know your neighborhood this isn't for everybody but know your neighborhood if you can, you must, there's people that can build an entire business on a 48 inch because they just do acres. And that's great, fantastic. But if, for those of you that's, that's not who I'm talking to, that's why I went with this mower. That's why this has been my dream mower for a very, very long time. 36 is the absolute perfect size for how I advertise and, and build my business and work my side hustle. Hydro is the ticket for ease, comfort, convenience um, it's just overall better it's you know it's it's like you buy a stick shift full-size pickup truck to get you down the road but once you get to a point where you know you've made some money and you're doing pretty good then you trade that truck in and you get yourself an automatic with air conditioning and Bluetooth and you know you you, you step up a little bit same thing you know you can get a belt drive 36 inch and do everything that I can do I'm just gonna do it a little bit easier. But it's gonna cost me a lot more. But I'm just gonna do it a little bit easier. So you, you know, you get your foot in the door, but you finance, you can get 0% interest with Citibank, with different places, with, with on Xmark. They got lots of places you can finance these. This was 6,300 plus tax. Um, so, but I went with this because I wanted a large area mower and this has always been my dream mower. Um, so there you go. Fingers. 
Now you try doing that with a zero turn right here and the engine guard would probably have hit over there or hit my bike or the, they're much bigger. With a zero, or with a walk behind like this, compared to a zero turn, that was a zero turn I meant. With a walk behind like this, you can stand to the side and you can swing this thing around and the footprint is much smaller this way with a walk behind. That's another reason why I really like walk behinds. One more reason is when you're on a zero turn, you're usually sitting right here. The deck is either under you or just in front of you. Most zero turns, your deck is right here, your seat is right here, your feet are right here, and these caster wheels are here, and then the engine and the guard is back here, right? When you're sitting here and you've got trees or you got something, you can't get your deck to it because you're in the trees. You're like, ah, trying to trying to cut. You, and you can't. In fact, I'll show you right this now. This isn't an exacting science here, but you see these trees. If you're sitting on the machine and you want to mow up here, you almost can't without, you know, and if it's a tree, like an oak tree with a lot of branches, man, you get scraped up a lot. But with a walk behind, If it's belt driven then you're probably going to get down and keep walking because you don't want to have to pull it back but you saw how easy that was hydro walk behind okay so from the demo that we just had in the garage with how i was moving around in such a tight spot i want you guys to pay attention to what i do back here and realize that a zero turn and, and i'm not trying to harp on zero turns don't get me wrong I, zero turns have their place in this business um just not in my business that's the only thing and so I'm just kind of explaining my purchase so you guys learn from me. The, the Gravely I purchased wasn't a mistake, but had I waited another month or so, this would have been the mower that I, I should have got in the first place. But as zero turns go, that Gravely was fantastic. Don't get me wrong at all. Um, but now this 36 inch, you watch how I can get close to the fence and back up and do three point turns and really reduce the amount of weed eating that I got to do. But the real trick will be when we go back there where it's much tighter and you'll see it's really tight and in fact the zero turn didn't fit all I could do is go down and come back I couldn't turn because the caster wheels and the engine guard there wasn't enough space so let's go ahead let's just set this up and mow for video purposes I'm gonna mow this section first before I move over here normally I would just make big sweeping passes because it's smarter but I don't want the camera so far back that I'm a spec so uh,
yard would hit the house. So you'd have to go up and come back and then go to the middle and then do it like an eight point turn or just go all the way up and then down and then all the way up and then down. But watch what you can do with a hydro walk behind. Deck is in front, handles are up here and it's just your body that's back there. Now here's the thing, there's no more mowing after using this wide area mower than there would be if I used my Honda or my Troy Built or any other small push mower. Because I was able to go right along the house to the corner and the deck leads the way. And then back up a little bit and make that turn and my engine guard didn't knock out the air conditioner. Remember the video, $3,780 in damage? me back here now I was able to go all the way up to the corner back up and then do my turn go to the fence back up and then do my turn and so I didn't I didn't leave much to weed eat in comparison to a push mower I mean, that thing does a sweet job. Oh, we're rocking the sun now. I did feel a couple raindrops. Supposed to rain tomorrow. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm gonna get this video up tonight, Saturday night. You guys will be watching it tonight uh, and tomorrow morning, Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, and thank you for the early congratulations from everybody. I know, I know you guys are just as excited for me as I am for me uh, and to share uh, a new chapter in the side hustle, growing your side hustle. So there we go. We definitely grew. Coming up, videos on the trailer. All right, uh, lots of information coming there. We'll probably do something tomorrow. All right. Tell me about the whistle. The whistle. The whistle. The whistle.